Okay, this is page eight. Of differentiation. Um, first of all, there's a nice little paragraph here explaining um, the philosophy of optimization problems, which we've talked about before in the past. Uh, a lot of times, optimization problems, the first part is the most difficult, which is um, you have a equation that you need to optimize, and it has three variables. And you know the calculator is only capable of, of uh, graphing two variable equations, y and x, right? So usually the first step in a complex optimization problem is to eliminate one of the variables by using a constraint equation. Constraint equations only have two variables. You use the constraint equation to eliminate one of the two variables in the three variable equation. And then the three variable equation, the optimization equation, only has two variables and you can then you can put it in the calculator. Okay? All right, so let's do the first one here. So these problems are, are specifically designed to uh, get you uh, accustomed to the process of using constraint equations to eliminate one. Okay, so here we are on page eight of uh, differentiation. So um, back when we studied quadratics, we started working with optimization problems. If you remember, optimization, uh, optimization problems sometimes start with two equations. One of the equations I call the optimization equation. It's got three variables. And the other equation is called the constraint equation. It has two variables. Um, now, you know that when you put a function in the calculator, you need to have a two variable equation, x and y, right? Before we can get in the calculator, we need to take our optimization three variable equation and make it into a two variable equation. How do we do that? We use the constraint equation. The constraint equation is used to eliminate one of the variables in the optimization equation, make it into a two variable x and y and then we put that in the ti84 and we can graph and find maximum and minimum points okay so on this page there's some specific examples of how we use algebra to uh, use constraint equations to eliminate one of the three variables in the optimization equation so let's get to it so in this first one we have two equations a equals bh and b minus h equals seven uh, this is obviously the optimization equation because it has three variables. This is the constraint equation. They even say it's the constraint equation. It has two variables. Um, at the beginning of this page, they're very specific in what we should be doing in order to eliminate one of the variables in the optimization equation. By practicing it a lot, it might become natural for you. Okay? All right, so the first step is use the constraint to express B in terms of H. What does that mean, B in terms of H? That means on the left side, you're going to have B, and on the right side, you're going to have some numbers and the variable H. So what they're saying is, take the constraint equation, B minus H equals 7, and what can we do to it so that we get B by itself on the left side? Well, to get B by itself on the left side, we just need to uh, undo what H is doing to B. It's subtracting H, so we do the opposite. We're going to add h to both sides and then we're going to get b equals 7 plus h okay so we did part a re says to, to use the constraint to express b in terms of h here b in terms of h okay h is on the right side with numbers okay all right now we're going to do step two which is to express a in terms of h what we're doing here is we're going to eliminate one of the three variables in the optimization equation make it a two variable equation so the optimization equation is a equals bh. We're going to eliminate one of the variables by substituting this expression in for b. So we'll put this in for b, and then we'll end up with a equals 7 plus h times h. And we're done. That's all we need to do. Once we get into this form, we can actually put this equation into the calculator, right? Because into the calculator, we could put a in for y1, and then the right side, we can just change our h's into x. So if we put this expression into the calculator, uh, we could find maximum and minimum points. See how that works? Okay. Um, 
Next one, it says that v equals 3xt is subject to this constraint, x plus t equals 10. First, they tell us use the constraint equation to express x in terms of t. What does that mean? We want to get x by itself on the left, and then on the right side, we should have some numbers and t. Okay, so let's do that. We'll take the constraint equation, x plus t equals 10, and we're going to get x by itself on the left side, which means we're going to have to undo what's happening with t here. So the plus t is going to be eliminated by doing a minus t. And so we'll get x equals 10 minus t. There is part A. Part A says to find x in terms of t. We just did it right there. Now we're going to uh, express v in terms of t. So first we're going to start with the original optimization equation. It's got three variables in it, v, x, and t. We're going to eliminate one of the variables. We're going to eliminate x by substituting in, substituting in 10 minus t for x. So we'll have v equals 3. We're going to put 10 minus t in here. Notice that we put parentheses around 10 minus t. We don't just write 10 minus t with nothing. We need to put parentheses around it because it's one element. Okay. Same thing back here. We put 7 plus h with parentheses around it. All right. All right. So now we have the optimization equation, except now it only has two variables. It's got the v, which could be y1 in the calculator, and it's got t's, which could be the x in the calculator. So we could put this in the calculator using this expression right here, right? Okay, number three, p equals x squared times y, subject to the constraint 2x plus y equals 5. Even if they didn't tell us that this was the constraint equation, we know because it's got two variables. We know that this is the optimization equation because it has three variables. So the instructions are to use the constraint to express y in terms of x, which means we want y by itself on the left side. So we want y equals blah, blah, blah with x on the right side with some numbers. So let's write down the constraint equation. And then we're going to isolate the y. We're going to get y by itself. How do we do that? We need to get rid of this plus 2x, so we do minus 2x to both sides, and then we'll have y equals 5 minus 2x, right? We have a constraint. Uh, we have y in terms of x. Now we can use that to eliminate one of the variables in the optimization equation. The optimization equation, p equals x squared times y, has three variables. We can eliminate the y variable by substituting in 5 minus 2x. So p equals x squared times 5 minus 2x, okay? So you see, we've eliminated the y. Now we have an expression for p, which is two variables only. It's got p, which we could convert to y1 to put in the calculator, and the x squared, 5 minus 2x, we just put in as is with x's, okay? All right, last one, number four. Uh, capital R equals 1 half n r squared subject to the constraint n minus r equals 25. On this one, they don't give us such specific um, uh, instructions. They don't tell us uh, about what we should do first. They just say express capital R in terms of small r. If we say, okay, if I want to express capital R in terms of small r only, do you see that I need to get rid of the n? How do I get rid of the n? I need to use this constraint equation to get rid of the n. I would put n on the left side by itself, and then I would be able to replace the n with an expression which has r. So first I'm going to write down the constraint equation. Then I'm going to put n by itself on the left by adding r to both sides. n equals 25 plus r. Okay. Now I can put the 25 plus r in for n. And that gets rid of n. Now I'll have capital R equals 1 half times 25 plus R. Remember, I put parentheses around the 25 plus R, okay, and R squared. Now it's ready for the calculator, right? This other instruction says to express capital R in terms of n. Here we express capital R in terms of small r. Now we want to express capital R in terms of n. So before, we solved for n to get rid of it. Now we're going to solve for r to get rid of that. So let's again put n minus r equals 25. 
we want to isolate R. So the first thing we're going to do is gonna get, we're going to get rid of N on the left side by subtracting N from both sides. Then we have negative R equals 25 minus N, right? Now we need to get rid of this negative R. We need to uh, multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, whichever you prefer. I prefer to multiply by negative 1. If I multiply both sides by negative 1, then negative 1 times negative r gives us positive r. And then the left side says, you know, you could put the negative 1 on the front, 25 minus n. Okay, so now we have this expression. We could simplify it further, but we could leave it like this if we want to. We have an expression for r. Now we could take the optimization equation, where r equals 1 half nr squared, we can get rid of the r by putting this expression in for r. So now we'll have capital R equals 1 half times n, and then we'll put negative 1 here and 25 minus n. Okay, so do you see we, uh, oh, look what I did. I forgot. I do need to put parentheses around it, just like I did every other time. Even though there's these parentheses here, we need to put another set of parentheses. And we're going to square it because remember the squared here? I forgot about the squared. Okay, so here's our capital R expression with the R replaced so that everything in, in terms of N. This was a challenging problem to finish it up um, if you are going for a 5, 6, or 7 on the exam. Definitely uh, be aware of how to do these types of problems.